So now we know the various rules that we're supposed to use for the purpose of reducing a complex block diagram into simple block diagrams. Let's now see a few examples as in how this can be used for the purpose of doing this reduction. My name is Rishi Ramchu and welcome to the Backbench Engineering Community where I make a journey easy for you. So if you guys haven't watched the previous video where I've explained the rules that we are supposed to use to reduce huge complex block diagrams to simple ones, please do watch it. I'll leave the link in the description below. Please do watch it first before watching this video. So now let's see an example as in how we can reduce huge and complex block diagrams into simple ones. So first let us see this particular question. So let us see this particular question. So first when we see such complex block diagrams, we have to sit and first analyze this block diagram. So when we analyze this block diagram, the first thing that we deduce is the fact that this has got three main blocks, G1, G2 and G3. And now here from G3, a particular feedback element is provided over here, which is given as H2 and this H2 is a negative feedback. And here from G2, another feedback is given over here and this feedback is H1. So here the main strategy behind how you use these rules is very simple. We have to organize this in such a way that this would now become a clear feedback element. Let me make that simple for you. So now when we observe this particular diagram, what we observe is that it is this particular branch over here that is making the whole fuss. So if we move this branch somewhere over here or here, then we could actually reduce it by somehow. So what we observe is that we will like imagine what happens if it, this moves over here or if this moves over here. So let us assume that we are moving this branch over here. So now when we move this branch over here, what we observe is that when this goes over here, then these two are directly in series. So these two can be directly multiplied together and then this forms a particular feedback like this and this forms a direct feedback like this thereby simplifying things. So let us just move this particular feedback over here like this. So when we move a particular branch ahead of a particular block we have seen that from the rules we have seen that we have to add another block with a gain 1 divided by G3. So here we have moved it over here. So once we move this branch over here, now what we observe is that here these two are in series and these two are in series. So because these two are in series, we know that when two blocks are in series, then this can be reduced just as the multiplication of these two blocks. So this G2, G3 will become a single block with again G2, G3, the simple multiplication. And here these two are also in series and therefore on multiplying these two, this becomes H1 into 1 by G3. So that becomes H1 by G3. So we have now kind of simplified that huge complex diagram into a bit more simpler diagram. So let's now go a bit more forward. So now here what we observe is that this is a particular feedback to this particular loop. That is if this is provided over here, if this is the forward gain, then a negative feedback of H2 is present for this particular block. But we know that when we have a particular block G and if we are providing a negative transfer function say H over here then what we observe is that the combined transfer function is given as G divided by 1 plus GH. So therefore using this formula over here what we observe is that in this particular case when we combine these two this would become G2 G3 divided by 1 plus G2, G3 into H. That is what happens when we combine these two. So therefore, let us draw it again. So now this has reduced to this particular block. So now here what we observe is that these two are in series. So therefore, if two blocks are in series, then this could be reduced as a simple multiplication of this and this. So therefore, these two blocks would combine together to form G1, G2, G3 divided by 1 plus G2, G3, H2. So now again what we observe is that this particular block forms a negative feedback over here. So therefore applying the formula for a negative feedback this would now become 
G1, G2, G3 divided by 1 plus G2, G3, H2. The whole divided by this multiplied by this. So 1 plus this multiplied by this. That is G1, G2, G3 divided by 1 plus G2, G3, H2 multiplied by H1 by G3. So on simplifying this, we would get G2, G3, H2 divided by 1 plus G2, G3, H2 plus G1, G2, H1. So therefore, this is now the entire complex block diagram has been reduced to one block with G2, G3, H2 divided by 1 plus G2, G3, H2 plus G1, G2, H1. So therefore, this thus is the required transfer function of this particular complex block diagram. So what we just did was that we broke down or we simplified a very complex block diagram into a symbol or a single block over here and thereby we obtained the transfer function of that block diagram. This is simply how we use the concept of the reduction of block diagrams to obtain the transfer function of a very complex control system. As simple as that guys, there's nothing more to it. So I hope you guys now have a clear understanding of how you can reduce complex block diagrams and obtain the transfer function of a particular control system. And if you guys found this video informative, please do hit the like button and join this community by hitting that subscribe button. We'll be discussing about the further topics in the upcoming videos. So stay tuned, stay subscribed. Until next time, I'll see you guys in the next video. Thank you.